Hello and welcome to the solving part of this first online edition of our course Answer Set Solving in Practice. My name is still Thorsten Schaub and this course is part of a master program that we are running at the University of Potsdam. In fact, I'd say that this part is one of the highlights of the course since it introduces the key concepts and algorithms that underlie modern ASP solvers. But let's look at the outline. So we start first of all by motivating this approach and then give more or less the final but ultimate characterization of stable models in terms of Boolean constraints or no goods. And these no goods more or less, at least the package that we describe in the end, furnishes the final blueprint of the data structures on which the algorithms in section 4 rely for computing stable models. Actually, this algorithmic framework is more or less the standard framework of modern ASP solvers and it's re it relies on this idea of conflicts. So these algorithms are really eager to run into conflicts, to analyze them and then not to learn them, but how to say to record them, that, the, that they do not run into them again. Okay, I won't go too much into details and then as usual we wrap up by a few things to remember. This approach to ASP solving relies on concepts and lessons learned from the area of constraint processing and satisfiability testing. So you may know that actually both of them are also interested in solving combinatorial search problems. That is, they look for assignments of values to variables such that a given uh, set of constraints is satisfied. And of course, uh, satisfiability testing is a special case of constraint processing in which the range of variables is restricted to two, namely true and false, while in constraint processing that can be arbitrary things like, I don't know, integers, natural numbers, you name it. Well, what actually had turned out to be the case is once you specialize some of the general frameworks such as constraint processing to, to this framework uh, of satisfiability testing, you can conceive new methods and specialized methods that lead to a tremendous boost in performance. And this was a great success story in satisfiability testing. The question is, of course, how can we now draw from that? The key to the great performance of satisfiability testing solvers, or simply set solvers, lies in its simplicity. It's not just about the two truth values that can only be assigned to a variable. It's also that problem specifications are expressed in terms of conjunctive normal form or sets of clauses, sets of disjunctions of literals. And this is a very simple uh, type of flat uh, constraints, right, that are easily manipulated. Also, on them, only two inference rules are used. One is unit propagation for computing, so to speak, deterministic consequences, calculating truth values of variables. And the other is a, 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 a case analysis rule, right, for conducting search. Now, this makes the whole framework very simple and, uh, and somehow very, uh, very easy to optimize. And this is, is actually uh, witnessed by the great performance of the solvers. Okay, the question is, of course, how can we exploit this technology for ASP solving? First of all, we have to realize that both of these approaches, let it be constraint processing or satisfiability testing, operate under the open world assumption, while ASP and the stable model semantics uh, implement closed world reasoning. And we've actually seen how much it takes to capture this closed world reasoning. So it's not just as in set uh, about finding a model uh, of a set of rules, if you take a logic program, right? But then you also have to make sure that each set of atoms has an external support. And we've actually seen before that uh, on a result that if you do this under the same language, this may cause an exponential blow up if you do this in a monotonic approach such as, such as satisfiability testing. So one has to be very, very careful actually when using this technology to accommodate for closed world reasoning. So at the end of the day, that's the idea, right? We want to view, view inferences in ASP as unipropagation on nodes. So unipropagation is the major inference rules in satisfiability solvers. However, here we want to use no goods as a more general concept, because after all, we are not really compiling into set, we are using or adapting the technology. So what does this buy us? And actually, here's a good comparison. So what we had before 
is a plethora of inference rules. And if you remember actually from the proof theoretic characterization, the tableau calculus that was capturing the inferences in ASP solvers consisted of 13 inference rules. Right? While once we do this manipulation, more or less, we compi by compiling um, inferences into, into no-goods, first of all, we also get a simple flat data structure, as we will see, and we have uh, two inference rules, unipropagation and case analysis. So this is really the big boost that this gives us. But there are more benefits to that. At the end of the day, this simple idea carries very far and provides us with a general methodology of capturing arbitrary language constructs in ASP by transforming them into no-goods. So you want to come up with a new language construct, uh, you provide a translation into no-goods and you plug it into the overall framework and you can run them. So that's pretty cool. So what we get is thus paraphrasing, a uniform constraint-based framework for capturing the inferences induced by these language constructs. And the no-good is nothing else than the Boolean constraint. But keep in mind that techniques actually due to uh, constraint processing or satisfiability testing are designed to operate under the open world assumption. So you can't simply take them off the shelf and plug them into an ASP system. You always have to think about how closed world reasoning affects these techniques. How do you account for loops in that or unfounded sets that are induced for that? This already makes things much more complicated. Also keep in mind that ASP solvers are based on a much richer language, cardinality constraints, weight constraints, optimization as a reasoning mode, and, and many other reasoning modes. And so this makes actually the whole thing much more complex than a SAT solver. So citing Benjamin Kaufman, the builder of CLASP the solver, he says that CLASP, or let's say 10% of the source code of CLASP, would make a SAT solver. All the rest, that is 90%, account for ASP-specific uh, features, and hence the systems are much richer and, of course, much more complex. Nonetheless, actually, uh, now, nowadays ASP solvers are at eye height with such solver, that is their performance, um, and they provide us highly competitive implementations that can solve problems of the same order of magnitude as such solvers can, can solve nowadays. So that's pretty cool, and actually it's thanks to the guys who boosted actually the technology in satisfiability testing. Without their ideas, well, we wouldn't be where we are now. <laughs>